Barely Emerging is recorded on the lands of the Ghana people. We at Haunted Cow Collective acknowledge the Ghana people and all other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the sovereign custodians of this country. We pay our respects to Elders past and present. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Like it didn't need to be called Samantha because you'd be like, yeah, that's my fucking wife. I don't know how to pronounce this, so, and the first time I pronounced this, it was constant. Hey guys, I hope you're hungry because today we're serving up some two minute Googles. Yum, yum. Yum. Today we are talking about titles. So what we have each done is we have given each other a little topic to go away and do what we do best. You know, as students, we got super used to Googling shit last minute, like on the bus into uni. So we have given each other a topic. We're going to go away, do a two minute Google on it, and then come back and report the findings, essentially. For this episode, I looked up a brief history about why the fuck art works have titles. Mm Mm-hmm. It turns out it is only a thing within the last, like, 300 or so years. Yep. Because it was one of those things that I always hated doing at uni. I would either think way too hard about it or Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think about it. Turns out that a lot of the time, artworks that have titles, it's only because they needed them for, like, cataloging. Yep. Because if you think about it, back in the day, pre-Renaissance or whatever, art was like a trade. Yeah. So, you know, you wouldn't really need a title because someone would come and commission an artwork from you you would agree upon the subject of the commission. So then when you got the painting, it's like you knew what you were looking at. Yeah. Like it didn't need to be called Samantha because you'd be like, yeah, that's my fucking wife. (laughs) You know, it's like someone would commission a portrait of their family, it would hang in their fireplace and people would come over and be like, sick picture of your family. Yeah. You know, it didn't need to be called the Arnolfini painting. (laughs) It wasn't until works started to move around. So when people started to like buy and sell work and they started to be like distributed reproduction. So when like printing came into it, they were given titles out of necessity because museums are like, oh, fuck, we need a way to catalogue these things. Mm -hmm. But the interesting byproduct of that is because the artists didn't actually give them the titles themselves, they, A, have really basic bitch names, you know, like Madonna and Child, Mm -hmm. and you're like, yeah, thanks. Or they were given really erroneous names. Like the the best kind of example of that is, I think it was Rembrandt, and he has the painting The Night Watch. Mm -hmm. And it was called that because the museum that got it and like named it really we're looking at it after it had been gathering like hundreds of years of dust and the varnish had yellowed so it looked quite dim yeah but the painting itself is actually a daytime scene and it's not of a watch so the night watch has nothing to do with a watch at night (coughs) a watch at night I'm not thinking of a wristwatch. I'm thinking, you know, like um, like a neighbourhood watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah. know, the night's watch. The night's watch, the exactly. Night's watch. The night is dark and full of terrors. Yes. Titling your art for the sake of titling your art is only like a modern invention. Yeah. You know, so like going back to like old art having like basic bitch names, it's because it was just a descriptor of what the art was. Yeah, exactly. You know, so if it was a painting of nude reclining, it's probably called nude reclining. Yeah. Because that was literally just the catalogue name that they needed to give it and trying to Google these. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Especially if you don't know the artist by name. Yeah. Because then you're just like a uh, coquettish photo of, like, girl with light hair and parasol, and it's like that's what it was called in the gallery. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But is but, it the right artist? But is it the right artist, you know? <laughs> because there's a couple of those Because there's there. a fucking couple of them. Yeah. But that brings us to, like, the modern practice of art being given titles that can in a way be an extension of the work, yeah, you know, because it, it it's no longer just a descriptor or like a catalogue, you know, sign. It's the artist more often than not has had a conscious decision to call the work that. Yeah. You know, it's like Dali's painting The Persistence of Memory. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, a lot of like melting clocks and like a desert landscape. Yeah. If he painted that in like that 1500s or something, it probably would just be called Clock Landscape. Yeah. You know, but calling it The Persistence of Memory, you know, gives it, I don't know, a meaning. That painting sucks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it like it, it elevates it into like something else. Like it gives yeah. the viewer a different subject matter. Yeah, it, yeah. But it gives them like an angle into what the artist was going for. Yeah. Which is interesting because I know that for a long time, especially, an artwork was known 
by like a colloquial name. Mm. It's like it doesn't matter if the artist has taken great pains to name their artwork, it's going to be known by the colloquial name. Yeah, yeah. I think the painting's like Whistler's Mother. Yeah. Like, I, I can't remember the full name of the painting, but it's just, it's something like, you know, Arrangement One in Black and Grey with artist's mother because he wanted like the the idea of it was that he wanted people to look at the composition of the painting as a whole instead of just the fucking dope picture of his mom sitting in the front <laughs> but then even he started to call it whistler's mother you know <laughs> you, so just, it's like, you just can't fight you just can't you can't fight a better title yeah you know? <laughs> It's like no one calling your shit abstract in grey. Like, fuck off. Like, it's not happening. (laughs) So where is that line between is a work more than its title Mm -hmm. or is a work its title Mm -hmm. or, you know, fucking would an artwork by any other name, you know, like that whole (laughs) bullshit. Yeah, would it, like, where does it it stop? Mm. And then I know that you have looked up, like, untitled work. Yes. Because this is something that I had a pretty strong opinion on Mm -hmm. because in my own practice, if I've ever called things untitled, it's because I couldn't fucking think of a title. Yeah. I know friends of mine and like, I know you yourself, if you don't have a title for the work, it's because you didn't connect with it. Mm -hmm. You haven't thought of one. You've done this painting, you've finished it. You're looking at it and you're like, I don't know what the fuck to call you. Yeah. So untitled. But then untitled can also be a conscious decision as well that informs the work. Yes. So leading quite seamlessly. I was going to (laughs) say. Which is a nice segue into... Great transition. So I had the task of Googling some titles, two of which are very different. One is Untitled. (laughs) (laughs) My favourite. Yes. And the other I will reveal later because Mm -hmm. the title is very much indicative of the work. So you've looked up one that... It's it's funny because in a way it's like both of these examples and, you know, we'll get to them, but both of them it's like they're an extension of the work. They're not... Mm -hmm. A name for the work. Yes, exactly. Which is interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So really thinking about the titles of your work and thinking about the impact that they have on your work is very important sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's like sometimes definitely it's like the the right or wrong title can really be the difference between people understanding and engaging with your work and not. You know, it's um like having having untitled is all well and good in mm-hmm. circumstances in certain circumstances but if you just have a breeze block on the floor in a gallery and it's called untitled yep you know nine times out of ten people are going to be like i've got nothing yep. yeah it goes back to the when the glasses were put on the floor in the gallery and people stood around it thinking that it was because it was in a gallery they thought it was oh, a the work. Moment sunglasses yeah. yeah 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 so the untitled work is from cindy sherman they're her film stills mm-hmm. i love this work yes she had it called untitled Untitled because she was commenting on the stereotypical woman in mm. Hollywood cinema. Like the female archetype. Yes, the yeah. female archetype. So if you're wanting a little bit of background on framing her work, have mm-hmm. a look at Laura Mulvey's article that we'll have uh, posted below. Mm-hmm. It goes further into the male gaze, mm-hmm. castrated woman, and all of that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. I won't bore you with the details there. The work is called Untitled because because of the fact that women in cinema of the time weren't seen as the subject of the movie. They were seen as the object that propels the subject, which is the man, forward within the story. A good read on it that I've looked at as well with uh, film stills is that it's the numbers aren't indicative of anything you know it'll be like untitled 52 in a series of like 12 yeah because the whole idea of it is it's like this is just one instance in a catalog of millions exactly you know it's like that any of these stills could be from any like film yeah from any director on any continent so it's that real idea of like none of these images have importance none Mm -hmm. of them have the importance of getting a title they're all just untitled yeah and i think she's done that pretty well throughout her career Mm. i I think i could be wrong but i know that yeah her her, um her untitled film stills it's like just such a great example of how purposefully leaving your work untitled yeah but in a way they're still titled because she's titled them untitled Untitled. it's it's such a like it's such a it's such a yummy one to kind of like yeah to think on yeah and the the fact with this work is like you don't actually need to see the work Mm. to be quite honest like Mm. once you know the premise of the work you can look at any movie in the time period and be like 
that looks like Cindy Sherman's yeah. film still. Yeah. It's it's funny because it's like, you know, you could be watching Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and you're mm. like, I think I've seen this in a gallery somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so uh, moving on to the next title that mm. I have deliciously picked for you. <laughs> <laughs> it is called Take the Money and Run oh, by... Yeah, this one is a great one. Uh, uh, Jens Hanning. Jens Hanning. Thank you yeah. for the pronunciation. Because when I first pronounced that, it was Jens Hanning. Yeah. <laughs> Jens Hanning. Jens. <laughs> so this is a really interesting work. And again, it's one that you probably don't even need to see the work itself. The story behind the work makes the work. Yeah, I think the story of it is the work, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Well, the title of it essentially is the work. Work. Definitely. So Jans Hanning, he was commissioned by uh, Gunston. I don't know how to pronounce this. So, and the first time I pronounced this, it was Kunsten. Um, <laughs> that's probably not the best um, yeah, pronunciation. Yeah, I don't know if that. it's like Kunsten, Kunsten, Gunston, Kunsten. Yeah. We'll just say Kunsten. Fuck it, Kunsten. I will now be referring to them as the museum from now on. <laughs> <laughs> That, look, that is fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the museum commissioned uh, Hanning to produce a work commenting on wages and how they're unequal and all that sort of blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think it was meant to be a comment on the cost of living for a year. Yeah. So they gave him like a bunch of money yeah. and were like, can you repurpose these into artworks? Yep. Yeah. And it wasn't just repurposing the money into artworks. They mm. were actually try they were commissioning him to make something that was very similar to artworks that he'd made before. Uh, okay, like remaking his work. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it's an even shitter premise than I thought. <laughs> I know. So he gets the money Fuck off, and Constant. he sends <laughs> And he sends back. It's funny that I did call them constant before oh, because is, they're, yeah, they're they are really constants. acting like one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, massive constant move. So he sends the museum his work and it's of blank canvases. Mm -hmm. So blank white canvases. I think there's little bits of like stickiness on them that probably would have meant that it's like maybe he's repurposed his work by taking all of the things off of it and just mm. giving him the blank canvases. I haven't looked that far into it, mm -hmm. but from what it looks like, it is blank white canvases with the little bits on there. Mm -hmm. So the museum curator or the manager, I, I don't know which, but they have gone on file to say, oh, was, I've got a humour about it now, mm -hmm. but until after we want our money back. Yeah. So they show the work they mm. put it up for exhibition they showed the work told everyone the title told everyone the story about it but then after they went okay Hanning <laughs> nice give, job give, give us, us the money our, back give us back our 40,000 krona yeah yeah so no it was uh closer to 80 oh damn or 100 and uh, 100 and something something oh, it, it's a weird number but he replied to them and said it is no longer an artwork if I send you back the money mm -hmm. it doesn't count mm -hmm. because by saying take the money and run if i give you back the money you don't have an artwork anymore exactly. you do not have the story anymore yeah. you've just forced this artist who is not a millionaire yeah to yeah. give you back money that yeah. you gave them for an artwork they commissioned an artwork and they got one yeah they did <laughs> they did so after the fact they've taken him to court mm. the court ruled that because the artwork had been put up for exhibition, mm -hmm. he has to pay back all but 40,000 kroner. Right. So that's where the 40,000 has 40, come 000. from. So he has since said, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And he has said that that, that money's been spent. Yeah. I couldn't even if I wanted to. Yeah. And it's it's a huge comment on artist wages. It is, yeah. Yeah. So he is appealing and mm. trying to say, I don't want to. I'm yeah. not going to. I did the artwork. And to be quite honest, in my very humble opinion, the artwork is better for it. It is, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, it's like they, they commissioned an artwork and he made it better. Yeah. You know, it's like getting an artist to use a year's worth of living wage to remake his old work. Yeah. That's just a shit fucking premise. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, like that just seems like it's dangling a carrot mm-hmm. in front of an artist being like, look, I know this is a year's worth of money, mm-hmm. but we want you to make work with it. With it. Mm-hmm. You know, but what he's given them instead is a much better artwork. Yeah. It's a much like edgier, much more politically charged one as Definitely. well. You know, yeah. and it, it's like, I don't know why they're fucking salty about it. Like yeah. they weren't going to be able to use that money anyway. Why should he have to give it back? Yeah. He gave them a fucking good artwork. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like, why are you, you're playing to it. Like mm-hmm. you are playing this villain for him. Like yeah. you've, you've given the artwork even more by demanding the money back. Yeah. You're really living up to your name. Exactly. You know, <laughs> Constant. <laughs> <laughs> if that artwork didn't have that title or if he just turned in blank canvases with no explanation, no yeah, nothing, yeah. that's different. But the title of the work, mm-hmm. Take the Money and Run, that's the work. That's the that's intent. You know, perfectly it's like, curated yeah, to my soul. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's a nice brain scratch, that it one. It is, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, eight blank canvases that he probably repurposed and then a huge statement on how fucking stupid the original commission work yeah. was yeah. <laughs> and how you need to pay artists more. Like, yeah. that's it's just a fantastic artwork. Yeah, just love it. Mm. So, yeah, they're the two titles and very different uh, yeah. ways of looking at titles as yeah. well by saying one, you don't want the title because it doesn't. A lack of title is the point. A lack of title is the point. And then another one where the title is the point. A lack of work point. is the yeah. point. Yeah. The lack of title <laughs> is the point. And then, you know. I could the geek out over point. that all day. I, I love <laughs> it when um, things have subverted the expectations yeah. of, you know, the rich. <laughs> yeah. No, it's. I, I remember following that story as it unfolded in yeah. real time and just being like, that's probably the best artwork I've heard in a minute. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Like, Everyone went on about the fucking banana duct tape to the uh, wall, don't but don't give a shit. Banana. Like, yeah, no. fucking take your money, take the money and run. That's yeah. just perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And so, yeah, there, there was discussion about, like, is he frauding the system and all that no. sort of stuff. We're like, no, no, no. no. He, he delivered an artwork. It's just not the one that they were expecting and one that they understood. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, they were going to give him that money either way. Mm-hmm. Constance. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to today's episode. We had a lot of fun making it. We will put photos of Cindy Sherman's film stills and whatever photos there may be of Jens Hanning's Take the Money and Run. We're not going to bother putting in Madonna and Child because there's a million of them. Yeah. (laughs) Just Google it for yourselves. There's so many. (laughs) All of those will be on our social media, so you can follow us on Instagram at Barely Emerging or at Haunted Cow Collective, and we'll put any links from articles that we used in today's episode in the description under the episode. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Can't have it out. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please. Love ya. Oh, love ya. Ooh. Ooh. Constant. <laughs>